Hello and welcome back to Aging Well, a monthly production of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. I'm your host, Nathan Lamb, and our topic on the show today is dementia caregiver training. And our focus on that topic is the Savvy Caregiver Program, which we just recently added at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. And we're very fortunate today mm -hmm. to have a couple of guests in studio who are very knowledgeable about this program. Liz, Nathaniel, welcome back. Thank sure. you Thank very you. much. Absolutely. So in this segment, I was hoping to sort of dive into some of the specific training of the program a little bit, give, some, give people an idea a little bit about what the curriculum is like. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause I think it's a, it's a topic where a lot of people need guidance and it, it's kind of fun to share some mm -hmm. of the knowledge that we have. So I guess where I'd start is again, in a very general sense, cause we're very protective of people's privacies. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the common challenges of providing dementia care that you saw going mm -hmm. through this first segment of the program? Um, I, th I think the, the first step, um, and that's where we start with the program, is just familiarizing yourself with dementia and the different stages, the different losses, and sort of what that means. Memory loss um, isn't just about you know, forgetting where your keys are, the things that we tend to think about, but it also has an impact on how you function. So things that we kind of take for granted, sort of activities like making a meal, Mm -hmm. There are a lot of little steps to that, and if you're uh, losing some cognitive ability, there's a lot that can impact that. And there's a lot, if you're not understanding what that means, um, you set yourself up for frustration, you set uh, the person you're taking care of up for frustration. But the thing is, once you understand sort of what's happening, you can intervene in a way that sets things up for success for both you and for the person you're taking care of. So right at the beginning, you, you, you hear um, a lot of confusion and frustration from people mm -hmm. who, are, who are living with in this experience. And um, the, the, the person they're caring for is obviously ex experiencing confusion um, as a result of the disability and the caregiver is conf experiencing confusion because of a lack of understanding of what what they're um, what they're trying to manage, mm -hmm. um, and so just that initial education, and it is fairly dense. Uh, this sort of educational component is is fairly dense um, at the beginning, um, as we provide information about the disease and the disease progression. Um, and I think for a lot of people, that does help them understand um, what they're working with, and uh, it helps sort of reduce the stress. That people experience when um, when they're having when they're experiencing that confusion and don't understand why the person they're caring for isn't able to do what they did before or isn't able to do tasks that they that may seem simple, um, and so it's really helpful to break it down the way Liz mentioned, to break down the sort of cognitive processes that are involved in even a simple task um, to help somebody understand um, what that what that requires. Um, and there are a lot of activities in the class, you know, as much as it's, there's a fairly large lecture component, there are a lot mm -hmm. of interactive activities both between members of the class and between the members of the class and us um, that will help people to better understand the situation. I was, I'm curious, mm -hmm. uh, interactive activities, can you give me an example of some of the things? So uh, one, one thing that, that the the training program comes mm -hmm. back to is a sort of visualization, placing yourself in a situation that usually is a sort of metaphor for what the person they're caring for may be going mm -hmm. through. Um, and it helps you understand if you are in this situation, what are my challenges? What, what is it that I have to, to do? And what are my obstacles? Um, and then we connect that with the research on dementia and, um, and connect it with material learned in previous classes to help people um, develop an understanding and develop strategies for, for approaching that kind of problem. Um, so that's one of the activities that mm -hmm. is used throughout the program. Um, there are activities that break people, break the larger class down into smaller groups um, so that people can share their own experiences and develop a, a sort of mm -hmm. strategies for resolving a particular scenario and then everybody shares with the class because a lot of ideas and creativity comes from the participants in the class itself, not just from us. Sounds very interactive. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> it sounds like there's a couple of components here. One of them, the one that I sort of latched onto immediately was when I'm learning by doing, 
the whole time I'm like, oh my gosh, am I doing this right? right. So, mm -hmm. so in that, res I would, I would suspect that's very reassuring. But there's also quite a bit of what I'm hearing is about um, understanding point of view and perspective, under sort of having a perspective on the circumstances. This might be new to you, but having that understanding of it. Right. I you know, one of the visualizations, which is particularly appropriate for the weather now, is I think you're like driving in a, a, a road that's maybe not that familiar, or maybe it is, but it feels different now because there's a storm. Mm -hmm. And so what is involved in sort of navigating uh, through this road safely? Mm -hmm. um, you have to pay attention, you have to know what's coming at you. And so thinking, thinking of a person with dementia sort of that way things seem familiar but they seem a little different so they're they're focusing differently they're paying attention to different things and all these external things like maybe there's someone in the car with you who's just like talking at you or the radio is on and you're trying so hard to just understand what's going on so there are a couple of scenarios like that where I found really helpful mm -hmm. as far as trying to imagine what that's like for someone um, and in terms of any other key concepts from the program that you teach to people, um, are there any others that we could share at the moment that spring to mind? Well, one that you, that you alluded to that I think is really important is the idea of actually, a, a, actually sort of turning the, the ideas and the sort of theoretical concepts into mm -hmm. action mm -hmm. and, and doing, ho doing activities with the person at home and, and with other people in the classroom um, it's very important for us to to really emphasize that trying and failing, mm -hmm. trying and seeing how it goes is a huge part of the caregiving process and the learning process. You have to try, you have to put some of these ideas into action and a huge part of the class, we don't necessarily call it homework, we like to call them home activities, is that we follow up the following week. Everything that we, that we provide as a suggested activity from the previous week, we follow up with the class, we find out mm -hmm. how it went, and we connect it with, with the material that we've learned in class um, so people can really sort of synthesize their experience, their lived experience with the classroom experience. Um, mm -hmm. And also really emphasizing that, it's, that there is no correct way to do things, um, and it's very easy for, for people to feel like they're a failure, and we emphasize that even trying is a huge success and is a huge, mm. um, um, a huge uh, a step towards learning and becoming a better caregiver. That sounds like a great program. It really does. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there anything mm -hmm. else that um, we'd want to add on this topic before we move on? I don't, I don't think so. I, I'm glad that you brought that point up again because I think there were certain things, you know, there are certain activities that for a lot of caregivers um, can be very trying and so the helping someone bathe mm -hmm. and so we had some great classes where the caregivers were just talking about what they tried differently mm -hmm. and what worked what mm -hmm. didn't work or maybe they wasn't a hundred percent the way they thought it would be but it was a step closer to where they wanted to be mm -hmm. um, and their them being encouraged by that and everyone being excited for them about that mm -hmm. and wanting to hear so what did you try again and how far did it go this time? So I, I'm glad you brought up that point mm -hmm. about just trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the, the, some of the later classes really focus on breaking down mm -hmm. the activities into small steps and learning how to actually create and, and implement activities with their person. Um, so first it's you learn about the, theori the sort of theoretical background and what it is that you're uh, developing your understanding of, of the dementia um, disease and progression, and then we work on okay. Now, what do we do with this information, and how do mm. how do we change? Um, how do we develop strategies? And so, a large part of it is working on developing strategies uh, at home that the person practices um, and breaking down those activities using the knowledge that they've gained at this point um, mm -hmm. to sort of best tailor those activities and their. In, and their uh, sort of interventions to, ha to better help the person they're caring for. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you covered a lot of ground mm -hmm. in six weeks. It, it was is wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's really a lot of material and well organized. It really is. And I, you know, I have to say, I've been in a professional role for almost 30 years now. I learned so much from this curriculum, even in the way that I approach both families now 
and um, and clients myself. So, no matter what you think you know, uh, you can learn so much from this curriculum. Mm -hmm. oh, that's outstanding. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And that's all for this segment. We'll be right back with more Aging Well.